Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I just want to start off by saying this cat over here is not Phil and I's cat before I get questions in the comments like, oh my gosh, you got a cat. No, we did not get a cat. This cat is the neighborhood cat, but it literally comes over here all the time. Like it was over here yesterday. It stayed for like a couple of hours and then it was over here on Friday as well. But now it comes around every few days. But it is literally the friendliest thing. So I'm just letting it sleep. So as you guys can see by the title of this video, this is going to be a current favorites video. And I feel like it has been so long since I have done a current favorites so I thought it was well overdue. I try to do these videos like every few months or so um, just when I have got like a lot of things that I really want to share. So I've got a good mixture of like fashion, TV shows, books, beauty, all that good stuff. Yeah without further ado let's jump into this video. So I may as well start off with the fashion pieces because I feel like they're some of like the more interesting things. So we will start off with these jeans here. So I've just done the buttons up because I feel like otherwise it was looking a bit funny. But I have been absolutely obsessed with these jeans lately. They have been my go-to jeans. So these ones here, they're just a really nice light wash of denim. It's probably more like a mid, a light to mid wash. They have a singular rip on the leg. The end is kind of like a raw hem, which I absolutely love. And um, they do have all of the buttons going down like that. And these ones here are Levi's jeans. So they have a little patch at the back and a little red tag on the bum. They say quality clothing Levi's premium. Now these ones here are the wedgie style in straight and I got mine in a size 29. These I actually did buy from the Levi's outlet store. Um, I bought them a while ago I think towards the end of last year when they were having a big sale on. I've been absolutely loving these. They just feel like such good quality denim as well and they're always like the jeans I reach for. They fit me perfectly like I don't have to wear a belt with them or anything. Next up we'll do a couple of pairs of shoes. So while I'm filming this video we're kind of going into autumn but it's still quite hot. So I wanted to share a couple of pairs of slides that I have been reaching for. So the first pair of these ones here. So these ones are honestly so comfortable. I'll just show you one foot. They have a like brown tanny base and then a black band across the top and it's kind of like a quilted leather. It is genuine leather as well, which is super nice. These ones I again actually got from the Mipiachi outlet. Um, so these are Mipiachi slides, but I got them from the outlet. And I think they only cost me about $80 or so. They're called the Nola slide, if anyone is interested. Um, and I've got these in tan and absolutely love the tan. And so I knew I wanted to get the black. So I got the black and I have literally been reaching for these all the time. They're also very lightweight as well. And they're very easy to store. Like I just store them like that and they're good to go so I have been loving those and then a more recent purchase that I purchased around boxing day are these slides here and I have been thrashing these slides again I'll just show you one of them but they have a bit of a platform which I love and then they have this chunky band across the top which is so so comfortable again I got these from the Mi Piachi outlet again these are genuine leather and they are just the most comfortable slides ever. Um, I can't find these on the website anymore. I don't know if they've sold out of them um, because if they're not on the website my chances are that they've sold out of all the sizes and they're obviously not bringing them back. I freaking love these like I'm obsessed with these. They're like my go-to slides. These I got in a 36 and then these ones I got in a 37. And then the last thing that I kind of have for the like fashion category. It's just a couple of claw clips. So I have been absolutely loving claw clips lately. So I have the a little pink rectangular one and I also have been reaching for these flowery ones so I have a purple one here but I've also got these flowery ones in kind of a deep pink a green and a white and also I recently bought a light blue and a light pink so I've got the flowers in so many different things these are always my go-to like especially on a day like today when I quite frankly need to wash my hair I've dry shampooed the crap out of it today because I want to have a shower tonight these are great on like the days where like you feel like your hair needs a wash but you also don't have time you just chuck it up in one of these and then it looks like you're good to go like you put together and you feel great so I've been loving reaching for these this pink one is from Glassons and these flowery ones I have bought from Kmart because they're like a two-pack for like eight bucks so 
can't go wrong. Next, I might move on to some TV shows. So I don't think I have any movies to share with you guys this time. So the first TV show that I have to share with you guys is Good Omens. Now this is so freaking funny. Um, I think it's on Netflix. I believe there's only one season as of right now. I think they are making a second one. It's kind of like a take on the end of the world, but except there's like an angel and a demon that are like best friends and they don't want the world to end because that means they'll be separated forever for eternity and so they're trying to do everything that they can in their power possible to stop the world from ending. It's just so funny, the humour in it is great. Um, it's based on a book as well which Phil and I have also got. I'll leave the trailers for all of the TV shows down below that I mentioned as well so that if you guys do want to go and watch any you can go and watch the trailer and see if the trailer will interest you. The next one that I have is Love is Blind. Now I I wanted to watch this because my friend Kara is obsessed with this TV show so I thought I'd give it a go. I have only watched the first season. Basically it's like this show where these people they like go around and they talk to people. Two rooms are together but there's a wall in the middle so you can't see what the other person looks like and so there's like I think there's about like seven girls and seven guys or whatever and they kind of go around and they talk to people see if they get like a vibe from someone and if they are getting a really really good vibe from this person and they want to like have a relationship with them they propose and it kind of just plays in the idea like is love really blind like can you fall in love with someone without seeing what they look like and kind of like is looks an important part of a relationship which I personally believe it is I think you have to be physically attracted to someone as well as find their personality attractive. Good show, very light-hearted show. I think I binged it all in like two days or something. The next TV show that I have to talk about is one that I am very, very late to the bandwagon on. And that is The Vampire Diaries. So Phil and I over the past few months have started watching The Vampire Diaries and needless to say we're obsessed with it. The acting is great. I really commend the actresses because they and the actors because they do such a good job of it. I think there's like eight seasons or something ridiculous. I think we're on season five as well and every season is good. Like there's not a season that I kind of prefer over the other I don't think. Yeah I mean I kind of love that whole like you know vampire werewolf trait. I think it's so interesting to like watch. I don't know why but I just I do love it. Um, It's way better than Twilight. I will give you that. So like if you're being put off watching it because you hated Twilight please don't compare it to Twilight. It is way better than Twilight. And then the last TV show that I have to talk about is one of the more recent ones that Phil and I binged and that is The Summer I Turned Pretty. So all of these other three like The Good Omens, Love is Blind and The Vampire Diaries have been on Netflix. The Summer I Turned Pretty is on Amazon Prime I think but we just streamed it <laughs> because I really wanted to watch it. And basically The Summer I Turned Pretty is based on <laughs> A book, this book that I'm going to talk about in a second, um, by Jenny Han, and it's basically like this girl goes to the summer house every summer. She has done ever since she was little because her mum and the mum that owns the summer house are best friends, and the mum that owns the summer house has two boys that are like around the girl's age of the second mum, and so like it's kind of her like falling in love with one of them and like you know spending her summer with them and like all that kind of thing and it's such a cool vibe. The TV show is done very well, um, I would say it sticks to this book pretty to a T. I was a bit nervous because I'd read the trilogy in high school because it's based on a trilogy and I loved it so I was a bit nervous when I heard they were making it into a TV show but it is done very well. There are a couple of things that they like change slightly but like it still works. I think they're making a season two as well but obviously there's only one season out at the moment but yeah I would honestly watch it again like it was really really good. Alrighty next up we might talk about some beauty products. So I have a few beauty products to talk to you guys about. First thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is a function of beauty shampoo and conditioner now this video is not sponsored by function of beauty before you guys all freak out in the comments i have been very cautious with putting this in my favorites video because i know that a lot of people do get sponsored by them and a lot of people don't know if it's actually worth the hype or if people are just promoting it because they're getting paid i would say personally it is worth the hype 
I have told a couple of friends about it as well. But basically, if you've never heard of Function of Beauty, Function of Beauty is a fully customizable hair care range. They also now do skincare as well. So essentially, you go onto their website, you fill out a little quiz, it asks you about your hair type, um, your hair goals. You can pick up to five hair goals. You can pick whether you want pumps for the bottles, you can pick the fragrance, you can pick how strong the fragrance is, and you can also pick the color as well. But my my hair profile is fine, wavy, and dry. My hair goals are hydrate, shine, thermal protection, volumize, and hair growth. Because I've been using Redken for a really, really long time, and I love Redken shampoos. They work on my hair really, really well. And I've been using salon stuff for years, so I was a bit nervous switching to something else. Like, I have used so much of this shampoo, and the conditioner, I feel like, goes down a bit slower because you shampoo your hair twice, you condition it once, and you just condition the lengths. You don't condition your scalp. And I have been absolutely loving them. I did get the smaller size, but I also feel like this size is a better fit for my shower because we have one of those built-in shower stand things in our shower, and these fit really nicely on the bottom shelf, whereas if they were bigger, they would be too big, and they'd have to sit in the bottom of the shower, and then I just... I just don't really like it when things do that. I feel like it looks messy. So I think I will actually end up purchasing the same size of this. You guys can see I picked orange to be my shampoo. I picked pink to be my conditioner. You can also get it like customized. So I got mine to say function of page on both the shampoo and conditioner. It does also come with a sticker pack, which I have not put on the bottle because like, I think they're cute, but, like, I'm also, like, I feel like they'll just peel off in the shower. And my fragrance is Nude Peach, which I feel like I'd go for again, because I love anything peach-scented. Um, and I went for Strong, and I feel like if you really want fragrance, get Strong, because I've had Body Shop shower gels that smell stronger than the Strong scent of this. In saying that, I do feel like I can smell the scent of it in my hair like at the end of the day after I've washed it and also like the end of the day that I have washed it. Um, so I normally wash my hair like twice a week. I do need to wash it today so my hair today is not the best um, example of what it looks like. But in saying that, like I haven't washed my hair for like four days and I don't feel like it looks too bad. It definitely gives my hair shine. It definitely volumizes my hair as well. I've noticed that when I come out of the shower I do have lift at the roots whereas with Redken I didn't. I also feel like it does hydrate my scalp because my scalp is less itchy. I'm getting closer to the days that I need to wash my hair which is great. I feel like my hair has grown a lot. Um, I feel like when I was using Redken I got my hair to about here because my friend Kara she cut my hair halfway through last year to about here and it grew like this much using Redken in a few months and so I feel like it's kind of grown about the same amount in the few months that I've been using this. So I think I've been using Function of Beauty since I think October, November of last year, and while I'm filming this, it's March. So I wanted to give it a good go before I recommended it to you guys. It also came really, really quickly. Like, I think it was like a week. The bottles are plastic, so if you drop them, they're not going to break in the shower. And then the last beauty product that I have to share with you guys is this. So this is the Inners Free Green Tea Cleansing Water. It says double squeezed green tea from the Juju Island. Now, you guys can see I've I've used probably like a third of this. Um, I just bought this from Sephora. I bought it after watching Sally Jo's video about Innisfree, um, because Innisfree are a Korean brand, um, and Korean skincare is always really, really good for your skin. Like it hydrates really well, it nourishes. They don't use like any chemicals and stuff. They just use like natural things. And I love this. My, I mean, you can't really tell with my skin today because I've got makeup on, but like I feel like I've been getting less breakouts using this and my Lush Let the Good Times Roll Cleanser and my Origins Ginseng Moisturizer. Like I feel like those three are like a match made in heaven. Like. My skin has been great. It does have like a little strange lid. So basically what you do is you put like a cotton round on the top and you press down and the product comes up onto the cotton round and then you just wipe it over your face and you let it sit. I love the packaging. The packaging is super sleek. Alrighty, next up we might do some food. Now I'm going to have to put pictures on the screen of these because I don't have either of these with me at the moment. So the first thing that I have been absolutely loving is the spinach and basil pesto dip. Can't remember exactly what the 
brand is but it has like the purple lid and you just find it in the supermarket with all the dips it is so good i love putting this on crackers and then putting that on the top and then putting like camembert cheese on the top but it's so good i literally went through a phase where that was all i had for lunch and that's literally what i feel like today but i don't have any because we've ran out and then the last food item is something that i have discovered recently that i am obsessed with um they can be kind of pricey so phil and i only buy them when they're on special but that is the capity brownie ice cream ice block things they're kind of like cuppity's version of magnums and oh my goodness they are so good so they have like the chocolate coating on the outside and then on the inside they have like another chocolate coating that's a bit more like melty and then they have like the vanilla ice cream and it is so so good a bit different to magnums as well because they have like that inside gooey chocolate layer as well like oh. last but not least we have books now i have quite a stack to share with you guys today plus one more so this might be a bit of a longer category but hopefully you guys don't mind i have been reading a lot lately and i have read some really good books that i wanted to share with you guys so the first one that i wanted to share with you guys is zoe sugg's new book which is the magpie society two for joy by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCullough. who says someone's playing a deadly game. So this is the sequel to um, The Magpie Society, One for Sorrow. I personally think this one was better. I really, really enjoyed this book. It's kind of like a dark academia vibe. It's YA, so it's like nothing too intense. One of the girls who is very well liked and very popular suddenly like dies and they realize that her death is a murder and so they're trying to figure out who killed her and why they killed her and the first book ends on a cliffhanger and then this book picks it up again but it's kind of like a duology so there won't be any more books that follow this story because it did get solved the ending was phenomenal it was so good i did not see it coming and i think that's why i loved it so much honestly really good it's told from a dual point of view so it was just from one person's point of view it would be kind of boring and I feel like it would lack something. The chapters are quite small as well. The writing's quite big. Do not read this though without reading the first book because otherwise it won't make sense. Hopefully I'm in kind of the same position. My um, battery just died so I have just changed it to my other one. But carrying on, the next book that I have in my favourites video is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. Now I was a bit humming and ahhing on whether I should put this in my favourites video just because of the amount of spice and it's quite descriptive spice in this book. I find some books are spicy but they don't really talk too much about the spice. They just like tell you that so and so had sex or like you know that kind of thing. Whereas this one goes a little bit more into detail which sometimes I want to read about and sometimes I don't. Most of the time I don't. The reason I put it in my favourites video is because I keep thinking about this book after I had finished reading it and it was so good. So it was a romance but it was also like a plot behind the romance and I loved it. I loved Colleen Hoover's writing. Basically the premise of this is a guy and a girl they meet on November 9 one year and the girl is about to move halfway across the world and so there's like no point in them starting a relationship when she's about to like move halfway across the world in their minds anyways and so they agree to meet on november 9 every year for i think five years i think it's told from a dual point of view i found very helpful like i really enjoy the dual point of view it had a massive plot twist in it that i did not see coming but i'm also really glad that they did it that way because it just added so much more to the story and so i commend colleen hoover on this it was a great story so we'll stick with the spice <laughs> the next book that i absolutely love that i want to share with you guys is this this is addicted to you by krista and becca ritchie so it just says two best friends liars lovers addicts one epic story so this is the first book in the addicted to you slash callaway sister series the callaway sister series you can read on its own and same with the addicted to you series because the callaway sister series is like a spin-off of this world um but in the front of the books they have the recommended reading order um and there's 10 books in the series and they recommend that you read the addicted series with the callaway sister series so that is what i'm gonna do i have only bought the first book because i wasn't sure if i liked it and i also didn't want to just go out and buy 10 books like that is a lot i thoroughly enjoyed this it is a little bit spicy but it's one of those spicy books that it like it doesn't go into detail 
with all of the spicy parts, just some of it. So I feel like that's okay and it's a bit easier to read. This I read really, really quickly as well. It's a very quick and easy book to read. Basically, the premise of this is there is a guy and a girl who were friends in high school, but then they started to fake date because the girl is addicted to sex and the guy is addicted to alcohol. They both come from like very, very rich families who would not approve of the way that they're living. So they like eight so that they'll keep their families happy but also so that they can cover each other's secrets. I think it's really interesting, like it was a really interesting concept to read about. Again, I feel like a little bit unrealistic because they've kept this fake dating up for years. I still think about it now, like even though I've completely finished the book. I love the cover as well, I think the cover's really cool. And I believe that like the other books in the series you get to hear from like the different sisters point of view because I think there's like four sisters or so in this family. The only thing I do wish is that it was told from a dual point of view because in the book it's just told from the girl's point of view and I think it would be really interesting to hear from the guy's point of view. I would say this is more of an adult fiction so if you're quite a young person watching this maybe wait till you're a little bit older but also like just be careful if you struggle with sex or alcohol um whether it's something you feel convicted towards or like you know that kind of thing so just be wary the next three books i'm gonna do all together because they are a trilogy and it is the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy. Now I read this trilogy in high school and absolutely loved it. But when I read it in high school I wasn't doing YouTube. And so I've talked about it on my channel before. But I recently reread it over the summer and again I loved it. I would say the first book was my favourite and then the third book and then the second book. It's still a great trilogy. It's a very light hearted trilogy as well. You can read it very quickly. Like I literally read all three of these books in January. These two are part of the same series but the cover of this obviously is different doesn't fully match but I don't like the cover of these other ones like it's got these giant faces on it and I'm just not really vibing that look so I kind of like having the movie cover with these because it's still nice and light but it also keeps like the far away people kind of going the first book is the summer I turned pretty the second book is it's not summer without you and the third book is will always have summer and they're written by Jenny Han and you do get dual perspective as you go into the last two books as well definitely pays to read it in summer or read it when the weather's hot because I feel like you'll get more out of it than if you read it like in the winter time the next book I have to share I want to share with caution um, and again there's definitely trigger warnings for this book so I would check them before you read but I definitely think it is worth the read if the trigger warnings don't affect you and that is Room by e Emma Donahue it says love knows no boundaries so basically the premise of this book is this girl gets kidnapped when she is a teenager I think she's about 17 or 19 and her kidnapper gets her pregnant and she has this baby and the story is told from the little boy's point of view so when you're reading from the point of view in the book with this guy he is five years old and so he is a five-year-old who has grown up in this shed and he thinks that this shed is the whole world because obviously his mum has been abducted, they're stuck in this shed and he has been there his whole life. And so he doesn't know any different. He doesn't know there's a whole wide world out there that's waiting to be explored. I don't know how Emma did it, but she literally makes it sound as if a five-year-old wrote this book. Like... The language is definitely like a five-year-old would say. The concepts are definitely like a five-year-old would think. Um, but it also manages to get across some really strong things of like rape and drug use and suicide and all that kind of thing. And just like the mental state that you're in when you get kidnapped. You know, trying to escape and feeling hopeless and all that kind of thing. So it is a heavy book, but in saying that, I did fly through it um, and I did really enjoy it. And it's so different from anything I've ever read. And then the last three books that I have to show you guys are part of a series and they are the last thing that I have for this favorites video. And they are the first three books in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. So I currently have the movie cover for the first book but I think maybe if I see it in an op shop I might swap it out but I'm also not sure because the back of this one also has interview questions with the author which 
I found really really interesting so yeah these are the first three books there are six books in the series and then there also is like a little novella book as well but I thoroughly enjoyed the series it's kind of like a magical realism kind of scenario where you're in the real world and you're following this main guy who doesn't realize that he has powers until one day his grandfather dies and his grandfather was part of this world and he finds it all out and then he goes looking for this world and finds it realizes he has powers and then there's like so much that happens i loved it i thought it was great um i think the thing that i really like about this is that it has really just quite frankly odd pictures in it like things like this and all of these pictures are real and Ransom Riggs who writes this series he has based the series around the pictures and I just think you have to be such a talented writer and such a creative mind to be able to come up with that concept so the first book is obviously Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children which there is a movie on which I feel like they pretty much followed although they swapped the main characters powers around with another character the second book is Hollow City and the third book is Library of Souls fourth book is The Map of Days the fifth book is Conference of the Birds and the sixth book is The Desolations of Devil's Acre and the novella is Tales of the Peculiar which is a book that they refer to in all three and the last three I presume of these books so that's really cool such a great series yeah I feel like you have to have quite a creative mind to be able to read these because it's not like a realistic concept I'm hoping to finish the series this year but I'm also a little bit sad to finish the series and actually I realized I have one more book that I want to talk to you guys about I know there's been a lot of books but I just took it back to the library yesterday um, but I really really enjoyed it and that is The Loop by Ben Oliver so I'll pop a little picture of the book here it is a YA I would say it's dystopian because it's kind of set in the future where basically the main guy in this book he is a prisoner in what's called the loop so the loop is a prison for people that are on death row and this world that they live in is very futuristic so technology kind of controls everything people are trying to like enhance their way of life how they live trying to make them live longer all that kind of thing and all of like the new technologies and new things are tested on these prisoners on death row and so it kind of like tells the story of him being stuck in this loop where you do the same thing every day you can't see any of the other prisoners either like they have a little like outside thing where they go outside for an hour each day but there's massive concrete walls between each of the prison cells so they can talk to each other but they can't see each other i think he was 10 when he went there or maybe he was 12 somewhere along those lines and I think he's now almost 18 but something happens and then they try and escape and so it's really interesting again it's a trilogy which sucks because I've only read the first book and it ended on a cliffhanger because I'm like oh I just want to know what happens but I haven't seen the second book anywhere so I'm currently on the hunt to try and find it because I did really enjoy it so I want to have my own physical copy of it I feel like it's a very similar concept to the Maze Runner so if you loved the Maze Runner you will love the loop the chapters are really short very easy to fly through as well and I did really enjoy the writing yeah a good idea and a good concept and it kind of shows you like what technology could do if we don't keep it under control well, there we go guys that is everything that I have for this favorites video I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing all of the things that I have been loving recently if you guys have tried any of these things if you've watched any of the TV shows if you've read any of the books let me know your thoughts down below also let me know down below as well what you guys have been loving at the moment because I'd love to know. I always love trying new things out. If you guys enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Please make sure to turn on the notifications and check out my social media. It's always linked down below in the description box. If you want to watch more current favourites that I've done on my channel I have an entire playlist. So I'll leave that playlist down below and in the eye for you guys as well. And yeah, I think that's everything. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.